You're now listening to Campfire Story Trail of Blood After a fierce game of football and a joyous victory, I came home jubilant, expecting my mother to welcome me home with a mug of sweet chocolate milkshake. I came home and called out to my mom. No response. I called out again. Still no response. I searched for her everywhere. While I was searching in the basement, the power went out. Pitch darkness, I could almost hear the voices of those vile creatures that lurk in the shadows. Just then, I heard a scream from upstairs. A shrill, hoarse voice. My mother's voice. My heart began to beat faster. I climbed up the stairs cautiously. I felt some movement in the room upstairs and heard the loud creaking of the wooden floor. A moment of silence, and yet another scream. I slammed the door open, and a man was standing by the window. I could only see his silhouette, and to my horror, in his hand, he was holding a bloody cleaver. He rushed towards me. In a fit of fear, I pushed him through the window, and he fell down with a thud. I rushed to my mom, who was coughing blood. Then I heard a whistle. A vile tune that haunted me ever since my death on that dark night. And then, a sound of metal hitting metal. The sound grew louder. The sound of approaching death. I dragged my mom to the closet and hid there. A knock on the door broke the silence. The knocking grew louder and so did our heartbeat. A loud thud and the door gave in. He was kicking and hurling things angrily. He walked out to search the other places. I crawled out of the closet slowly to call out for help. A loud bang and I felt a shock of pain running down my spine. I fell to the ground, paralyzed. He pulled up my mother and ran the blade through her skull. I saw it done to her with my own eyes. I couldn't do anything. My hands and legs felt numb. He held me by my collar and dragged me downstairs. My legs were bruised and bleeding. I felt painless amidst a lot of pain. He dragged me deep into the forest along a thorny path. He took me to the huge oak tree on the edge of the forest and held me high by my neck. For the first time in the moonlight, I laid my eyes on the living image of the devil himself. He plunged the cleaver right through my neck. A moment of pain and then permanent darkness. I became a spectacle of horror and he a famed legend. To this day, I have never seen this person again. Maybe he's a psycho killer or a supernatural demon. I'm still searching. Searching for the person who killed me and my mother. And you will help me, won't you? If you ever visit Louisiana, don't forget to visit my tomb. The Man in the Bathtub When I was two years old, my mother used to set me up on the counter in the bathroom while she did her makeup, just to keep an eye on me in the mornings. She said I often like to make faces in the mirror and giggle at myself like a normal toddler. However, one morning, she said I was looking into the mirror, which was opposite of the bathtub, and I smiled and pointed into the mirror, which reflected the opposite side of the room. She asked me what I was pointing at, and I replied, There's a man in the bathtub. This didn't alarm her, because, as she could see, there was no other person in the bathroom except for us. Besides, a two-year-old has an active imagination. She thought nothing of it until some time later. Two years later, when I was four and my younger brother was two, my mother had my brother in the bathroom with her. He sat on the counter like I did before, only he didn't often look in the mirror. 
He would play with my mom's makeup brushes or powders while she was doing her makeup and hair. One day, while sitting on the counter, he dropped the brush he had been playing with and started giggling. My mom asked him why he was laughing, noticing that he was staring directly behind her. My mom asked him why he was laughing, noticing that he was staring directly behind her. Mama, there's a man in the bathtub, he said, pointing to the part of the room behind her. My mother instantly froze in horror, recalling the time I had mentioned this thing to her two years prior. She turned around, expecting to find a person standing behind her, but found nothing. She's convinced to this day that children are able to see things that adults can no longer. And my brother and I saw the ghost of a man who had passed away in the house from a heart attack years before we moved in. However, even before hearing this story, for some reason, every time I was in that bathroom, I had to have the shower curtain open because of a never-ending feeling of being watched. Doctor Dark. Five minutes remaining, shouted Doctor Dark, his flamboyant game show host voice he was putting on, mixed with his naturally deep and husky voice, was somehow the most terrifying thing I'd ever heard. Six of us glared at the center of the table, our eyes locked on the same object and our bodies soaked in sweat. Five of us emotionally exhale as it finally stopped spinning and pointed at Jessica. It's okay, dear, said Eunice, a small 68-year-old with a bad back and a gambling problem. Remember, it's only a one in six chance. I'm pretty sure that's not what Jessica was thinking, though. This was her tenth time. So far, I'd not picked it up once. Fine, minute you mean? Shouted Dr. Dark. Jessica, a 26-year-old teacher with a $36,000 student loan, reached into the center once again. She picked it up, put it in her mouth, and nothing. She cried uncontrollably before placing it back in the middle of the table. Three minutes remaining, Dr. Dark bellowed, then aggressively pointed at Jessica for her to spin and continue. It landed on Jake, 44, and a bank manager. He whimpered ever so slightly before reaching slowly towards the center. He picked it up, put it in his mouth, and nothing. Dr. Dark sickeningly chuckled to himself again, and I swear Jake was going to piss himself. From the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of Dr. Dark glaring at me. Pfft, Dr. Dark. His chosen alias was clearly only forged because of his dark attire and surgeon scrubs. Two minutes remaining. He rapidly tapped his watch with excitement. It landed on Matthew. He's 29 years old, and he's the security guard here at the bank. Dr. Dark and his team were waiting for the van to arrive and figured they had some time to kill. I still couldn't believe it, though. Through this entire game time, the gun had been spun a total of 19 times, and still, not once, had it landed on me. Even more shockingly, though, no one had been hurt. What are the odds? Matthew picked up the gun from the center of the table, spun the chamber, and put it in his mouth. Nothing. Dr. Dark's watch began to bleep. Oh, thank fuck, it was finally over. Dr. Dark silenced his alarm and then quickly glared in my direction once more. His evil eyes and cruel, crooked smile were all I could see of him. 
His smile never wavered either, as he slowly raised his right hand and calmly gestured to continue. This time, we all cried. The spinning seemed to last a lifetime. Round and round it went. I think Jake might have actually pissed himself this time. The gun inevitably succumbed to the laws of physics and eventually stopped. Well, would you fucking believe it? Their van had already arrived, but Dr. Dark was still here, still glaring, still smiling. He again gestured for me to continue. I picked up the gun. I put it in my mouth. And... Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this session, please slay the like button on this video and crush the subscribe button for more content like this. Thank you and stay safe.